We're in week seven with the Springer Spaniel puppies now. We've been following them uh, every week since they, they arrived. With me now is their breeder and owner, Lisa. Here we are, week seven, we've made it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's been happening the last week? Really, in the process now of being fully weaned, they are still getting some milk from mom, but they're being fed four times a day now, a mixture of dry food, which I soften a little bit, and just some wet food. Uh, they have been out for their first journey in the car, so we took them in the car to the vets, checked them over, and microchipped them. So all that's recorded on their ducking certificates from their tail, if you remember when their tails were docked at the very beginning. The vet would come to me to do it, but I quite like them to go out in the car. So they've already gone in the car, they've gone to the vet, they saw all the nurses and everything, so that went really well. Uh, in addition, because I'm an assured breeder, I need a note from the vet for each puppy saying that he's checked them, he's happy with them, they're healthy. The only slight hiccup, not even a hiccup, but um, Bramble and Reggie, fine. Stenson had um, a slight umbilical hernia, which is really common, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just a small hole, it looks like a normal hernia. And, and can I just interrupt, can you tell me which one he is in the pack just so that we can pick him out? Stenson, he has the wider uh, white on his head, the wider blaze on, on the front of his head. And, and what do you do about this, this problem, or is it not you a problem? You do nothing. It's, he said nine times out of ten it heals itself, and that comes from mom um, chewing the umbilical cord. Depends how she chews it, so it's, it's not really a birth defect, it depends on how mom does that. Uh, and he had one undescended testicle. So, but again, because he was just coming up to seven weeks, it was more like six weeks at that point, the vet said it probably will come down. But the other boy, Reggie, both his were there. So it's just something to, to keep an eye on. But the only way that would affect you would be if you were gonna breed from him. But I know the people aren't gonna use him for breeding. So when he's neutered, the vet will sort out everything. So neither of those issues are a particular problem? No. Um, if you were selling him as a breeding dog, yes. If I was keeping him as a breeding dog, it might be. Uh, the worst case scenario with the hernia is it just, as they get, when they get bigger, the hernia should stay the same and then it just kind of disappears. The only problem would be if the hernia kept getting bigger. And then they would just need to fix that. Um, and then the, if the testicle doesn't descend, the neutering process is a slightly more complicated operation because they need to find it. It'll be somewhere in, in him. Now, obviously, there are a litter of three. You've had larger litters before. Um, and there's basically, there's not been as many of them to share mum's milk. So, so are they larger than the puppies have been in the past? Yeah, they're probably a little bit larger. Uh, normally, when you have a big litter, like the last one was eight, you, you always get one or two that you, you would say they're the runts of the litter, um, which doesn't sound very nice, but that just means they're smaller. So these are actually three that are almost, you know, exactly the same size, which is good. Uh, it's much better. So in the bigger litters, you'll get one big one, who's the one stealing all the milk. And then you get the little ones that you have to kind of help along a little bit. Um, whereas with the three, they've been fine and they've had plenty of milk and plenty of food. And the vet check that you've mentioned, that's something yep. you do with all puppies before they go off to their new homes? It's something I do, yeah. Um, uh, I have to for the short breeder scheme. Probably, I would think most people at this point, um, legitimate breeders are doing it because the puppies have to be microchipped. You can get people off the internet that will come and um, microchip, but I always go to the vets. So. Uh, yeah, and it's my peace of mind as well, so I know they're going. What I don't want to do is send somebody home with a puppy and get a phone call a couple of days later saying, oh, we've taken it to the vet and it's, this is wrong and that's wrong, and um, it just wouldn't, you know, it's not good so I'm happy that my vet's happy and I say to everybody that buys a puppy from me within 24 48 hours take it to your vet let your vet check them and make sure that your vet and my vet agree with each other um, and then any problems to get back to me Do vaccinations come into the equation yet, or is that later in the puppy's development? That's later. I don't vaccinate. Uh, legally in the UK, you don't have to. The only legal requirement is microchipping. Um, I don't vaccinate for two reasons. One, 
I think it's a good way of ensuring that the people take the puppy to the vet who bought it. Um, most people that are, are buying from an assured breeder are the type of people that will go right to a vet anyway. Uh, but one, it means that that person I know has made an appointment with a vet, will start a relationship with a vet, uh, vet surgery, um, and that their vet will see the puppy when it's small. We're in week seven, the puppies will be going mm -hmm. the, uh, after they've reached eight weeks old. Um, what advice do you give to those new owners when they go away with, with your puppies? Um, they will go away with a puppy pack, uh, which will have a, probably about a 20 page leaflet in it where I explain everything um, from grooming, feeding, exercise, uh, everything like that. I also say to them be prepared for a couple of nights crying and barking. No, I, the feedback I've had is they have, most people haven't had problems with that. A, they probably won't. This lot, uh, Bramble, the girl, she's going to a house with no other dog. With the other two are going to houses that already have my dogs. So if there's other dogs there, you don't tend to have a problem. Um, and I just say, you know, when they first get home, you might find a day or two they're not eating really well or anything, but it's just, it'll be nerves and it'll just be them in a new environment. Um, and I say, whether or not anyone listens to me, is when they're crying at night, don't go downstairs to them. Difficult. Difficult. And the worst, I think, is to have them in the bedroom with you, though some people do. Um, so really, it's up to the, it's up to the family that's, that's taking the puppy, how they want to have the puppy. But I don't have dogs upstairs. Um, but so some people will get upset by hearing the puppy cry and then bring it upstairs. And then you're starting this whole cycle of the dog wants to be upstairs with you all the time. But some people don't want, don't, doesn't matter to them, so it's up to them. How will you feel when they go? Um, You're a professional breeder, but yeah. you must get attached to them. You do get attached. Who, could, who wouldn't? Yeah, yeah, they, they are very cute. Um, for me, I breed them to, for, to go to other people, so you always know that. Um, the families are always nice, you know, I make sure who they're going to. Um, and actually, it, whilst you do miss them, it is nice to just have your own dogs back. Because to me... And your kitchen back. And my kitchen back, yeah. But to me, the two dogs that are here are my dogs. The puppies are other people's dogs. And it, it's actually just quite nice to go back to mom and dad, you know, Dylan and, and Poppy, and just go back to kind of normal life for a while. Because the puppies are like, are like any young children. They take so much energy and time and effort, so away from other relationships, so. Well, we wish them well, and uh, we really want to thank you for letting us visit weekly to, uh, you. to pest you. It's yeah. been really interesting what you told us. <laughs> it's been us. great. And uh, I hope, uh, hope you and the puppies do really well. Great, thank you. Yeah.